Hi guys, Omar here with Overlanding Just Cause and this video is about my TRX Terminator, the Jeep Commander. Hey, so in this video, I want to talk about the coil springs that I added for the Jeep. Now, if you watched my last video on the cost breakdown, I mentioned the rear coil springs were 1,000, I wanna say it was like $42, $1,042, very expensive. Considering that if you have a Wrangler, a Tacoma, a Forerunner, and you wanna get heavy duty springs for the rear, you can go on ARB and find them for 200, uh, 40 bucks, you could go on Amazon and find some heavy duty springs for 200 and you know, 30 bucks, things like that. But for a commander, there are no accessories. So um, what ended up happening was when I got my four inch super lift, I took a trip Airbnb uh, with my wife and another family and we loaded the Jeep up, right? So the, the, the lift kit, the suspension lift kit was just put on and we loaded the Jeep up, took this couple hour trip, and by the time we got there, the rear end was sagging about three inches. And just looking at it, I was disgusted. Just thinking about it, how it, how it looked, I was, it was just, uh, mm. yeah, anyway, it was bad. So uh, I had to do something about it, right? Uh, what made it even worse was when I got home, <laughs> and I unloaded the car, it went from three inches to two inches. I mean, it was still sagging and very noticeable. So again, I had to do something about it. I ended up calling my magical mechanic and asked him what are some options. Um, of course, you know, you have options of putting a spacer lift to make up that, that difference. You have air suspension that you can do. I wanted to get just beefier coils. Well, uh, he gave me the contact information for a, a company out of Kansas called Coil Spring Specialties. I talked to a man named Kevin, who was very helpful, very knowledgeable, and very patient. Uh, he helped me out, and him and I on the phone went through the whole list of things that I had envisioned for, for my car, for my Jeep. Um, told him I was getting into overlanding and how I wanted to build it up and how I wanted to add all this stuff. So what he ended up doing or what we ended up doing was taking the OEM specs of the vehicle, adding four inches for my lift and then adding the weight that I was going to add for the Jeep. One thing that I was not aware of, now again, I'm a newbie, guys. I'm new to all this kind of stuff, and I'm learning uh, every single day. So one thing that I learned during this process with coils and, and trying to uh, figure all this stuff out was that when the factory makes a vehicle, right, doesn't matter what kind of vehicle it is, if, you're, if you have coil springs or leaf springs or whatever the case is, each spring is rated for a different rate. So on the rear of the vehicle, the left side, the driver's side might be different from the passenger side, which makes complete sense. If you think about it, if your gas tank is on the passenger side, then that spring or that coil, that leaf spring, whatever, needs to accommodate for that weight. So it needs to be a little bit beefier. I completely skipped my mind. So when you buy a suspension lift kit, these coils, the springs aren't, are not rated for your vehicle. I mean, it might fit your vehicle, but the OEM specs aren't there. Um, so even though once I put the, the four inch super lift springs on, as soon as I added weight, it just sagged down. If you look, so again, this is the four inch super lift coil, and this is the new coil that's installed on the Jeep. Now there's literally probably a good 12 pound difference. Um, and you could just see this is, just looks way beefier. We had to take the OEM parts for the left side and right side of the rear. And again, he added four inches. And then we went down a list of all the things that are on the vehicle. So for example, 
uh, the rear bumper, the tire arm, the tire itself, all that weight combined about 300 pounds. The a loaded fridge with the fridge slide, another 100 pounds. The platform with the unistrut, um, you know, another 40 to 50 pounds. The roof rack with the Pelican cases and the awning, another 100 or so pounds. The total weight came up to came out to about 500 pounds. Um, I also told him I wanted to add water because I added a water system eventually. If you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. We rounded up to 600 pounds of additional weight. And this is what we came up with. It's a beefy spring. This is the super lift coil. I, I can like hold this with one hand easy. This one, I mean, I, I'm pretty strong, you know, work <laughs> out. Um, but this one is a lot heavier. I mean, there's a, a significant difference. But you can also just see how much more stout it is between the four inch super lift coil and this custom made coil. Let's take a look of how it looks installed on the vehicle and we'll I'll show you how far down it was sagging compared to how it sits now. All right, guys. So here is what the hell I was looking for this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, so here's that beefy coil and you can see, I mean, it's been on there for about, uh, I would say five months now and, uh, still have had no issues. Everything's been, been, uh, riding great. And if you notice there from, from ground, man, there's that damn sign again from ground to top edge 39 inches before it was about right at right at 37 inches and that's a big gap from 37 to where the edge of the fender is that it was sagging i couldn't let that go So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Again, guys, I'm new to all this. So um, every time I do something, I learn a lot. So um, if you have any questions, uh, you know, please feel free to ask. I, I answer them right away. Stay tuned next week for the next video. And also next Thursday is Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the family. Enjoy the time off if you have it. Be safe and I'll see you guys next week.